Are the Guardians of the Galaxy one of the weirdest groups of misfits in the cosmos? Maybe. But if we peer into the multiverse, we might find some versions that are even weirder. Welcome back, Nerd Squad. It's me, Amanda, and this is the top 10 alternate versions of the Guardians of the Galaxy, team and individual members. Which Guardian is your favorite? Let me know in the comments. Number 10, Willow. This is the version of Mantis that exists in DC Comics. No. I'm not kidding. Mantis was created by Steve Englehart and Don Heck, and when Englehart left Marvel to go work for DC, he took his creation with him. Sort of. I mean, obviously Mantis never really left Marvel. She got written out for a while as she was off being the baby mama to a cosmic messiah who actually recently came back in comics, the being known as Sequoia, or simply Koya, who attempted to destroy Earth and defeat the Skrull Kree Alliance as leader of the Kotati in Marvel's Empire event a few years back. But she would eventually return. However, while Marvel would keep their own version of that character, Englehart would also create a version of her for DC, known as the alien being named Will. Willow, basically the mantis of DC's Justice League of America from Earth One. And friends, before we move on to our next spot on this list, if you love what we do here at Top 10 Nerd, be sure to let us know that you love us by clicking that like. Number nine, First Guardians team. Well, some wouldn't consider them to be an alternate team based on the fact that they themselves are technically the original team. By modern standards, you could argue that they are an alternate. After all, Andy Lanning and Dan Abnett with an assist from James Gunn in terms of the MCU depictions are basically the creators of the modern day Guardians, the version of the team that inspired the Guardians that we have in the MCU. However, before the 2008 team was introduced, we had these folks who made their first appearance back in the 1960s. Technically, they are also from an alternate reality and not Earth 616, hailing from the futuristic alternate reality of Earth 691 and the year 3000. The original team made their first appearance in Marvel Super Heroes issue number 18. Their roster initially included Vance Astro, Martin X Tanaga, Captain Charlie 27, and Yondu Udanta. Number 8, Comic Strip. The Guardians of the Galaxy even assist in the famous Spider-Man comic strip, or at least Rocket the Raccoon does. His comic strip alternate itself ended up being uh, one of the allies of Spidey, teaming up with him to save Albuquerque, New Mexico from famed Guardians villain Ronan the Accuser. If you don't remember Ronan, allow me to refresh your memory. He was played by Lee Pace in the original Guardians of the Galaxy film, where he was revealed to be working for Thanos and ended up attacking Xandar before the Guardians of the Galaxy managed to form in order to protect Xandar and defeat him. Spider-Man and Rocket didn't initially hit it off in this strip. As most superhero team-ups generally start in the comics, they started out as adversaries, but initially realized they were both fighting on the side of good, and so they decided to team up to take Ronan on. Number 7, Original Star-Lord. When Star-Lord first appeared in the comics, he was a very different character. He initially joined up with the Guardians of the Galaxy original roster, but wasn't yet the version of Star-Lord that we have become used to based on Chris Pratt's depiction of the character in the MCU, which in turn was inspired, of course, by the 2008 Guardians of the Galaxy version, which greatly saw a revamp to his character and the whole team. This version of Star-Lord made his first appearance in Marvel Preview issue number 4, and was still known as Peter Quill, but with a very different look than his modern version. He also hailed from a different reality altogether, the Earth of 791, so while being the original version of this character, he also technically is an alternate in terms of him not hailing from the comic book main continuity of Earth 616 that we've come to consider as the main reality of Marvel today. Number 6, Sinjin Quarrel. Who is Sinjin Quarrel? Well, the second Star-Lord, yep. Before there was Peter Quill of Earth 616, but after there was Peter Quill of Earth 791, in the in-between times, if you will, there was Sinjin Quarrel. Sinjin Quarrel was the Star-Lord of the 90s and had a look very much inspired by his original 1975 counterpart. Sinjin made his first appearance in Star-Lord issue number one. He ended up becoming the new Star-Lord thanks to the previous Star-Lord's ship. Yeah, the original Star-Lord actually had a sentient ship. This ship had been separated from Peter for 12 years at this point, and so she recruited and helped Sinjin to become the new Star-Lord in Peter's absence. Number 5, Anime Team. Yeah, if you don't know, Marvel has anime. And I've actually heard it's pretty decent. I watched the beginning of an episode involving Iron Man the other day, and I actually really enjoyed the look and feel of the anime, so this is definitely something I need to revisit, the whole Marvel anime world. I think some of the full episodes may even be up on YouTube if you're interested and curious about them. One of the anime-inspired series that was created to push Marvel's universe and characters more into the Japanese market was the show Marvel Disc Wars, the 
Avengers. In this series, the Guardians of the Galaxy do appear. Disc Wars, by the way, is basically like what would happen if you took Pokemon and just like mashed it up with Marvel Comics. Marvel heroes basically become trapped in these things called discs, and they require the help of children to free them from their Pokeball-like containers by using special bio codes to like open them up. Okay, okay. But honestly, think of the merchandise potential here, guys. Number four, Drax the Android. A lot of folks really love the Silver Surfer cartoon, despite its short run. For many, this is still one of the memorable introductions they had to Marvel Comics and Jack Kirby's amazing art. Silver Surfer, the animated series, while short-lived, only having 13 episodes, was revolutionary in terms of its production and its design. The series combined both cel-shaded and computer animation, bringing to life Jack Kirby's famous art style. Drax appears in the series, but is quite different from his comic book Self. Instead, being an android who ends up becoming a friend to the Silver Surfer. Instead of Trax being a rage fueled being with the spirit of a human who Thanos killed, brought back to life by mentor Thanos' dad, who felt guilty about his son's involvement in the destruction of life, Drax is an android who works with the scientist mentor, who in this reality is actually Thanos' brother. Also, if you didn't know, yeah, that's Drax's origins in the comics. <laughs> I know, it's pretty wild. Number three, Anime Rocket Raccoon. What can I say? I guess Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 really has me in my feels when it comes to Rocket Raccoon. Well, we already talked about the team as a whole. I really wanted to zoom in here on the anime version of Rocket Raccoon. I just love his whole look in this show. He's got a very like kind of chibi vibe to me. Very cute, but also feisty. Honestly, I want a plush of the anime version of Rocket Raccoon. That would be so cool. He's so cute. Rocket Raccoon makes his first appearance in Marvel Disc Wars The Avengers Season 1, Episode 24, if you want to get a more animated look at him. He is, of course, a member of the Guardians of the Galaxy team here, like he is in so many other alternate universes. Despite being literally the cutest, he also hates when people call him cute, and of course, he hates being referred to as a rodent, just like the version of the character we're used to seeing on the big screen in the MCU. Number two, Lorelei. Willow wasn't the only alternate version of Mantis that Englehart would create. He'd also make another version of the character known as Lorelei. This version, however, was from a third publisher. Yeah, after Englehart took Mantis to DC, creating Willow, she got a miniseries there. However, when that miniseries was canceled, he moved again and created another version of Mantis. He really loves Mantis, so that he could continue her story. I love that there are like three versions of Mantis with like three different publishers, but that technically her story is continued in like each of these continuities. This version of the character was known as Lorelei. Like the Mantis over at Marvel and the one over at DC, she was expecting an alien baby and Lorelei's story saw the continuation of her becoming a mother, with this version of the character giving birth to the child that she'd had through two other continuities and publishers prior to this. Number one, Gamora the Wanderer. Gamora also appears in the Silver Surfer animated series. She also is quite different from her comic book counterpart, like Drax. This alternate version of Gamora belongs not to the Guardians of the Galaxy team, but instead is a member of a group known as the Wanderers. The Wanderers initially act as antagonists to the Silver Surfer, tracking him down so that they can basically put him on trial for Galactus's crimes. Pretty unfair, really, since Silver Surfer, you know, he just works for Galactus. But I guess, you know, catching Galactus Galactus and putting him on trial, as well as, you know, finding a courtroom big enough for him to fit in, would be a much greater, if not completely impossible, challenge. So, honestly, fair enough. That's about it. I'll see you next time, but until then, you stay nerdy, YouTube.